Do you want an edge on your sports book? We know that you do. And that's why we are here. Welcome into the only daily sports betting podcast that's in your feed before 11 a.m. powered by Sportsline. Welcome to the Early Edge. I am the coach every single day. Best bets, best information, best cappers, biggest sports in the world. Today, we're going to try to set the stage for you with several different bets from the biggest games you know it's a thursday night that means only one thing thursday night football we've got college hoops also we're going to look ahead a little bit to some college football this weekend so let's bring in our cappers now uh mr tom do not take that bass out of your voice for nelly and tommy i've already called the bad beat police today they're not stopping at our house not today good morning good morning uh yeah that'd be nice if they skipped us just one day this week just one day. All right, our next man, Mr. Emery Hunt. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I either have my cup of coffee or I just listen to Tom talk, and it just does the same effect for me. It gets me up. <laughs> warms me up in the morning. <laughs> I like it. And finally, we call him the maestro, senior analyst at Sportsline.com, uh, the Sportsline app, Larry Hartstein. Last night, you're over. Your best bet, uh, it barely covered, Larry, at halftime. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Minus 22. You had it covered at halftime. Good morning. Good morning. You love getting them like that. Three and one with my hoops plays last night. Let's get it again today. All right, let's go. First game on the board for us. We're talking Thursday night football. It's AFC West time. Chargers at the Raiders, Las Vegas, giving three. That according to our good friends over at William Hill. The total at 53 and a half. Emery, you're going to start us off. Give it to me. You know, I'm laying those points with the Raiders, man. I think offensively speaking, they have the firepower to make sure things go smoothly tonight on a short week. Defensively, yes, they will give up the big play. So I do see this as a back and forth affair. But I do think in the end, the Raiders with a little bit more experience than the Chargers on offense, especially at quarterback and out there on a the perimeter. I'm going to go with the Raiders to, to cover here easily. You know, I'm looking more at the total here, and it's, you know, this is a divisional matchup. And typically, later in the season, in these kind of quote unquote rematches between teams in the same division, I tend to look for the unders being more of a smarter play. And I think that's the situation that we have in this one. I, if we go back to that first game, there were 57 points scored in it, which I think is well within the normal range of outcomes for this game. But you have to remember, if you look closer in that game, the Raiders, after a Chargers touchdown late in the second quarter, just before halftime, decided to go for it with less than a minute on the clock. Derek Carr sacked. He fumbles. The Chargers recover. They get a cheap field goal right before halftime without having to do anything for it. And then the same thing happens pretty much again in the fourth quarter where late in the game, the Raiders punt, the Chargers muff it, the Raiders jump on it, and they tack on another field goal. That's six points right there. You take that away. That was a 51-point game, and that's underneath this total. And I think that while that stuff is still possible – In these kind of rematch games where you've seen each other, you know what you're trying to do, you've got plenty of tape on your opponent, I think defenses have a little bit more of an edge than they typically would earlier in the season. So I like the under in this one. I can't agree with you, Tom. Uh, You know, that game was 57, and the Chargers were at the goal line when the game ended for another possible score. Raiders missing four defensive starters. Raiders' home games have been going over by nine points per game this season. I'm going to lean over. Well, whenever we have a stalemate like this here on the show, we simply go to the sportsline.com and the Sportsline app, and we have two expert picks there. In fact, both are on the over, including RJ White, our number one NFL handicapper this season. He likes the over as well. The Sportsline model has 56% of the time the over coming in. So, Tom, we're going to overrule you, but we hear you. Okay, now we also like props especially on Thursdays, Sunday nights, and Monday nights. Uh, There's got to be a prop that all of you like here. Tommy, let's start with you. Yeah, you know, I'm just a sucker for quarterback rushing props as it is. And I'm looking at the total for this game for both QBs, and I saw Justin Herbert sitting there at nine and a half yards. That feels too low for me. And I, if you look at Herbert's production the last few weeks, he really hasn't run the ball at all. Part of that was in the 45 nothing loss to the Patriots. You're not going to have your quarterback doing much rushing when you're down 40 points. But – I, if you look in his first nine games before that, he was averaging 24 yards rushing per game. He was running the ball a lot. And I think that in this matchup, particularly against the Raiders, he rushed for 24 yards on like five or six carries. And I think that in this matchup against this defense, the way things are going to go, he's going to have room to move the ball. And it might just be scrambling to get away from the pass rush. So I think nine and a half is too low. I like the value on it. Emory, go ahead. You, you know, I like the the prop for Darren Waller going over 61 and a half yards receiving. I think that's an easy number for him to hit. He's their number one target, their big playmaker. They're going to try to feed him the football. He's going to hit that over in that yardage total, in my opinion, 
really quickly. Uh, just to throw in a bonus there, 38 and a half pass attempts for Justin Herbert. I think he goes over that number the last three games, 54, 53, 45 attempts respectively. He's going to go over 38 and a half in this ball game. I like Austin Eckler to go over 55 and a half rushing yards. I mean, we all know how great a receiver he is, but since he's come back averaging over 12 carries a game against a Raiders rush defense, giving up 211, 180 the last two weeks, uh, go over with Eckler on the ground. And all of these prop bets, really, you need a close game. And we we all think, I think, there's going to be a close game, obviously, uh, with the Raiders uh, being at minus three. Okay, uh, real quickly, don't forget that if you're not a Sportsline member, you need to be because it can matter. Uh, last night, Larry, you had Colorado as a best bet over Nebraska-Omaha. And if people were a Sportsline member, what would have happened going into tonight? Yeah, well, last night, me and another handicapper on the side, Matt Severance, both locked in Wyoming, minus seven and a half against that same Omaha team, traveling on a back-to-back, having just gotten blown out by 40 against a rested Wyoming team. Now the line is all the way up to ten and a half. It's not a best bet for me at the current number, but that's why it pays to have a membership. And we're going to do you even one better. If you go right now and you sign up for a Sportsline.com membership, Sportsline membership, we're going to give you 30 days for free when you use the promo code EDGE. Use the promo code EDGE. we get you 30 days for free, and we're going to help you take it right to the pay window. I got Nebraska uh, – or excuse me, I got Wyoming in tonight at minus 10. So I was right in the middle, but I still played it because I believe in you, Maestro. Uh, all right, so it's time to look ahead now. College football, last regular season weekend, but so many games that matter. Emery, let's start with you. What's the game you're looking at? What's the number? Alabama minus 17 over Florida. Florida got – beat by LSU last week, they'll get blown out by Alabama. I, I'm not going to one of the championship games. I'm going to one of my championship games. That's It's Army Air Force. We all know my service academy under principle. <laughs> the, the, the under in service academy games since 2005, after last week's Army-Navy game, is now 37-9-1. And, and in this particular matchup, the under has hit in six straight with the game averaging a total of 29.5 points. It's at 37.5 right now. I think it could get close but I don't think it's going over. I'm going to go with the uh, sports line projection model, which is 24 and 11 on college football over unders this season. And it really likes the under in Northwestern Ohio state, the total at 57 projecting only 49 points go under. Northwestern really plays at a slow pace and we've seen they can bleed that clock game after game. Uh, so a great a, on the Sportsline app, guys, that's a play that you want to make. They're graded for a reason. All right, quickly, time for our recap, our consensus, because we overruled Tom, uh, the over 53 and a half, uh, according to Sportsline, on the Thursday night football game, Chargers and the Raiders. Then in our prop bets, oh, and Emory liked uh, the Raiders, given the three, my apologies. Uh, then in the prop bets, we like Waller over 61 and a half receiving yards, Herbert over nine and a half rushing yards, and Eckler over 55 and a half rush yards. And then you heard our look aheads, Alabama, the Army under, and that great A between Northwestern and Ohio State under. All right, look at that. We did it all in 10 minutes, right on the number or under. Every single day, we're in your feed before 11 a.m. with the best bets, the best cappers, and the biggest sports. Let's get going in the right direction today. For a time, take that bass out of your voice. For Nelly, my man Emery Hunt, and the maestro, Larry Hartstein, and the man who puts it all together, our great producer, Jacob. I am the coach. Remember, this is the only place for your early edge.